Okay, this is video number three in the Ken Stout troubleshooting uh, challenge. And Ken, I've got, uh, Ken's connected with me right now and we're gonna try doing some work on his mother's computer. So this is a little weird how this is all going up. Right now I've, I've already published video number one of this little series of introducing the challenge. I've already made my video showing my thoughts of what needs to be done. And I uploaded that to Google Drive yesterday so that Ken could see it, but I haven't published it, that yet because I want to give some time for that first video. So here I'm going to switch over to Ken. There you are. Hello, Ken. Hi, Doug. Hi, Room. All right. So you're, I, I guess you're at your mother's place now? Is yeah, I'm physically at mom's right now. Okay. Okay. So we're going to see what we can do about fixing this, this issue. And uh, there's been a few responses in the comments section on the first video. Uh, not that actually adds to what I intend to do today, unless the things that I intend to do today fail, <laughs> then, then the comments that were in there, I think might be next steps. And you noticed in one of the videos that you've already seen is, I think I made a comment about, since your mother's use is mostly on the internet, doesn't really have other much other programs installed, Right. that it would have been reasonable to just go ahead and reinstall Windows from scratch on this computer and, and start fresh. And uh, absolutely, that, that's correct. But I relish the challenge to try to fix a problem rather right. than just <laughs> nuke and pave is one of the ways to refer to that or sure. just reformat and start over again. So then, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and punch over to, uh, to the computer and I just realized this is a little different because we're not live streaming now. This is a live recording, so it's not going to get edited. It's going to get published just the way it is. But because I don't, I didn't go through my normal setup for the live stream, I realized I think I'm going to have to make an adjustment here. Yeah, when I switched over to show the computer number two, um, you're not showing up in the Zoom video until I make a couple of changes. So I'm going to fix that. And also, you're not going to be able to watch this on Zoom uh, because I'm excuse me on YouTube because it's not live streaming right now. Right. Well, that's fine. I'll I'll see what happens on the screen. Yeah, you see so, what happens so. on the sure. screen. So let's see. Then come over here and make this change. So this looks a little weird to the audience right now. They're seeing some behind the scenes futzing that I have to do to set up for this presentation. Okay, so here we got it. So we just noticed <laughs> before hitting the record button that down here in the system tray, we got this globe indication, which is telling us that your computer isn't connected to the internet right now, yet I am connected remotely to it through the internet. Right. So that's another anomaly. How is that happening? Um, I'm going to go ahead and can, can I turn off this notifications? Right. Then we'll just turn it back on. Thing, and, uh, yeah. If she, yeah. if she wants it. So it just this news and interest stops getting in our way. Right. Every time I float over it. So if I come over here to notifications, there'd be all of those virus notifications. Now I want to point out, it's my opinion at this time that the computer probably is not infected with a virus. These, I believe, are all spam. Uh, just They're just advertising messages, trying to get you to click on them. And then if you do that, that's when you're going to get into trouble. Right. What the trouble is going to be, I don't know. It could be trying to get you to call a phone number to let somebody clean up your connect to your computer and clean up your computer. Then they're going to scam you for money or whatever it may be. Each one of these... Each one of these may be a different scam. And then as we scroll down, there's even more. So this shows 17 more right here. And this all I showed in the um, in the prior videos. So right. we're not going to spend any time looking at them. And then they all say higher CAPTCHA hyphen settle. Right. And when you go to that uh, web uh, or do a Google search on that name, you find that, yes, it's a advertising scam um, pop-ups. 
So when we were trying to get you connected remotely or get me connected remotely to you, you were having trouble with Google Chrome with all the pop-ups that were happening there. So I had you do a incognito mode and that's how we were able to get set up. So when I launch Google Chrome here, I'm expecting to see a bunch of should. trouble and it may not happen right away. Uh, there's a recipe ideas down there and maybe it's not going to happen until we try to go someplace. So if I actually try to go to, I had you go to logmein123.com. Oh, well, that was a problem. Looks like you misspelled it there. Yeah, That's, the first time. The third okay. one down is good. Yeah, this one down here uh, looks good. Uh, Logmein123, we need the .com on it. Uh, if we don't, oh, that works. Yeah, if we don't put the .com on it, then we'll get a uh, search result. So let's see if we just do, if I do the logme123 without the .com, it doesn't know what website you want. Okay. And so it just gets us this. But so far, we're not seeing any any pop-ups. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, so, it's good. Yeah, well, they, they, I, I think they're still there. They're just, they're just kind of behaving right now. So let's go over in here to extensions and see if there's some uh, thing obvious here. Nothing obvious here, certainly not. Uh, then, and it was, so is it just behaving now? Let's close Google Chrome and go back in and see if we get something different. Yeah, it's just behaving. Yeah, it's being good. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Yep. All right. So that's that's real curious. Then let's come and look at this uh, connection to see what we got. So a left click on it. It shows up here connected. Right. And that's correct. Yeah. So there's just this globe down here should not be displaying there. So that's just another anomaly. Uh, the main thing that we're after is Windows Defender that it won't activate. And in here we got a green check mark. At this point it looks like everything's okay. But when we click on this and go in deeper, that is account protection. That's not even the screen that, I was, that it would normally come up with. Here we go. Security at glance, account protection. Hmm. And that's not even the screen that you were getting when you were demonstrating on, no, on your not. original video. Okay. All right. Um, so another couple thoughts that I uh, did not include in the video that I sent you, we'll go look at that, is uh, Windows key system restore and come here to create restore point i don't recall that we ever talked about this so you do have protection on and if we come here to system restore we can see what dates are available to restore the system to now system restore does not affect data it 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 will return operating system files and configuration files back to the date that we select so we did see an indication that the Windows Defender updates were working as recent, I think it was June 7th. Sounds um, about right. So we could even do a restore to May 28th, and that could potentially get the computer all the way back to normal functioning state. Never thought about that. Yeah, you're right. So let's go take a look at... Windows update settings to refresh our memory of when Windows Defender last updated successfully. So view update history and scroll down definition updates. The June 25th failed, June 9th succeeded. So we could do a restore to the May date, and that sounds fairly promising. 
Um, I'm very much interested in having a look at that um, group policy right. editor settings. So I'm going to reduce your screen to its normal size and I'm going to do a copy of that website that has the um, instructions for doing this. So I'm doing a control C copy of the URL. You're not seeing that right now. And then alt tab to get back to your computer and then bring Google Chrome back up. Click in the address bar, control V to paste. So here's those instructions for group policy editor on Windows Home. So before I do this, I'll refresh the audience's memory with a Windows key R, Winver, and show that this is Windows 10 Home and it's uh, version 21H1. Okay. Yep, we're good. So this was the item in here that says add group policy editor to Windows 10 Home with PowerShell. And I mentioned in the prior video that it's that it was odd that they don't actually use PowerShell to do this. So this takes us to another page within Major Geeks. A few possible ways to install Group Policy Editor in Windows 10 Home, but I think right down here is, let's see, Run Administrator, once again, this tweak. Did I pass the download? Yeah, it's at the top. Oh, that's right, that's right. Uh, this download right here. Yep. And there it goes. Okay. Do you have any particular folder that you like to put utilities? No. <laughs> okay. So I'll just, we'll, we'll just, this is not going to be a continuing thing for this computer. So let's just. Hope go not. Ahead. Yeah. And uh, right click on that. Um. Yeah, we don't even get a, oh, this computer has 7-zip. That's why we didn't get a menu option in here to unzip it. So I'm going to say open with Windows Explorer because I just find that a lot of times WinZip has been expired. The demo mode has been expired. Probably, yeah. So then here is this GP edit enabler. I'll right-click on it, and I can't even do... Um, run as administrator there because this is, I think, inside the zip file. So I'm going to copy that file from within the zip file and come out here to the blank area, right click and paste it. And I'll try right clicking from here and there I get a run as administrator. So I can't run it as administrator from within the zip file. So that by copying it, and then pasting it outside the zip file, that in effect unzipped it. And then the goal here is when you go in and start looking at them, we're wanting to see not enabled, but I think we're both putting 50 cents on it's gonna say enabled. Yeah, well, we're hoping it's gonna be uh, something and there's going to be configured and then and we think that is what's preventing Windows Defender from running. Uh, <laughs> right now, we couldn't even get to the the buttons for doing a scan now. Right. Right? Right. No, it wouldn't even, couldn't go past that one page. It didn't show that page. We're getting it. All right. It's going to be slow. Come on. Come on. No, no, no. You sure? No, I don't care. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, I'll do it this way. Doug, this is my mom. Hi. Hey. This is Doug. Hello, oh, Ken's yeah. mom. <laughs> <laughs> don't let her fool you. <laughs> So this so, looks good. So what was said? What was said that what happened? We don't know yet. You your your antivirus shows that it's on, but it's not on. And we think there's a setting in here. That's what he's checking for now. Oh, oh okay. 
<laughs> That's what we were just talking about. We're looking for a word not enabled. Oh, I see. Where's that little thing you left here? You got to put up? I took it to the car. You talking oh. about the light? I don't know what it it's is. It's a light. Okay. Yeah. It's in the car. Right. Yeah. Do you need it? I just want to make sure you took it with you. No. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, and well, I did, I you did check your friend. You're good. My friend if you page. two need me, you just call her. Okay. I will do that. <laughs> it's going pretty quick. Well, it's got several more graphs to do. There, it did multiple <laughs> progress graphs, so we don't really know that yet. There, boom, it just jumped to 100%. Yep. So then here's another one. That one's going faster. Look like it jumped back to the first one, maybe. Let's see. 31B, 385, 364, 35, AMD 64. Is this kind of an AMD processor? Here, this, this number is different. 1023, 572. Yeah, the, the end number of those long yeah. codes are different. And this is, this is similar to what it did on my computer in the uh, second video. It did a few of You these. paused it too when you ran that, didn't you? I, no, I don't think I paused it. Oh, you mean the recording? Right, when you were recording mm -hmm. it. I think no, I thought you I, paused it. Maybe, but I don't, I don't recall doing that. Seems to be going. I think much. I would have. I think I would have wanted to show a realistic expectation for people. <laughs> so I figured I'll oh, we're publish. Done. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. I'll publish the second video later today. And then this one I'll probably publish Saturday or Sunday. And and I'll we'll explain should explain for the audience. Uh we've been doing Saturdays for you, but you're not available this no, Saturday no. or Sunday. You're available today, Friday, and I didn't want to do this as a live stream because this is Carrie Holzman's regular day yep. <laughs> for live stream and I don't want to uh be in conflict with his his time um so here's press any key to continue so there's a space bar so that does that piece and then and then there are instructions just say go ahead and try it from there and then if that doesn't work to copy those folders so um windows key r gp edit dot msc and on my computer this did not work and yours it does work how about that without having to copy those folders so that's sweet Thanks. all right so then open this folder and let's make this column a little wider and then am i going to remember the path i want to say it was windows components and then microsoft this is the direction i want right along. microsoft defender, microsoft defender antivirus i think so i think it was the top one okay but after that i got lost and then it was network inspection real-time protection yeah that sounds right yeah i think and well actually i think it was all of these it, um because remember there was that one that i put in the video about having to expand one of these right to see everything so let's make let's maximize this I'm not go configured. look at the real-time protection to begin with and see if that's all not configured. So that's all not configured. And then here, all these are not configured. And then here, and then down arrow to go to the next one, down arrow to go to the next one, down arrow, down arrow. 
and then that gets us down arrow gets us into these sub items this is not feeling promising to me no it's actually saying what it's supposed to so that's, that's interesting. right that's right but we also have the registry method to check now here we'll just have to scroll down a little bit not much come back to here Go continue with the down arrow all not configured all not configured so that was a bust okay so then i'm going to switch back to my computer and grab the url for the registry method that's on windows report alt tab to come back to your computer go to full screen open a new tab we haven't had any more pop-ups i noticed that it's behaving fix windows defenders deactivated by group policy so this also deals with the group policy method let's get down to There's a registry path. Oh yeah, because I remember you had to yeah. switch the screen to cop to do that. Okay, so here's Windows key R, reg edit, enter, yes to the user account control, and then hold down the Windows key right arrow, let go of the Windows key, and click on the screen that I want to have on the left side. That's amazing. And then H key local machine software policies Microsoft. Scroll down to Windows Defender and if it's deactivated by virtue of a registry key in here, then we would see the registry key. We are not seeing the registry key. So that means this also is not a solution. Wow. That's not happy. All right. So uh, taking a look at where in here it tells what we're going to do. So use, reg, use regedit. Go to the following path. We did that. Scrolling down one page worth by clicking in the part of the scroll bar below the scroll box to see what it's telling us to look for here. It says delete the value in disable anti-spyware key. So we're expecting to see a disable anti-spyware key in this folder or in this folder and it's not present. So that's not our issue. All right. We are zero for two. <laughs> and let's see what uh, we have also there's no extensions in Google Chrome no and then so another direction to go that I did not include in the video was to use an online scanning tool such as ESET has an online scanner which I, I like that that takes a while for it to run I'm more inclined at this point for us to go the direction of system restore because that actually kind of looks kind of promising and we don't know what else is wrong right now besides Windows Defender. We see this thing with, with Internet Explorer. We know that you've got the pop-ups coming into uh, your notifications panel and I want to go look at something in there in a moment but just coming back in here to see is there something i'm doing wrong about i i'm expecting to find that scan now option here and my I, i'm going to go take a look on my computer and be sure that i'm going the right path there so i'm clicking on the windows security on my computer then the virus and threat protection and boom there's the quick scan and it's on the virus and threat protection screen so your computer, clicking here, 
when you were doing it in your video, it took you to that screen right here. Right. I go I go to it a little differently. That might I don't think that's go, it. Go, go ahead and try it. Go ahead and show go. me how you go to it. Well, this the way I am. I'm so set in my ways. No, that's fine. There's nothing down wrong here, with set in your ways. All set, all settings. And I go to Windows Security. And I go to Virus and Threat Protections. And there it is. Oh, there it is. All right. Which makes sense that it would, it does go this way because you're going the more full route, whereas the other way you're trying to do it from within. But I don't, right. I don't think it's going to work. I think if you click on manage settings right there. Right. We're, we're going to find that where all these still things are disabled. Out. Still great. Right. Out. Yeah. No. Yeah. So that's, that's a target of what we're trying to fix. So our next fix solution is, is going to be system restore. But I want to take a look at something else here. This is showing no new, no new, no new notifications. I want to go to manage notifications and see if we can find where those notifications are coming from. Good point. Focus assist, security and maintenance, backup settings, Microsoft Edge. I'm thinking somehow those are coming to us from security and maintenance. Hide content. When notifications are on lock screen, play notification. I was expecting we'd find some other utility or program of where those are coming from. And we're not seeing that. So these dates on here now, 3.15 p.m. Okay, in the prior video, they were all recent times. Right. Now, if we cl clear all notifications, do they come right back pretty quick? This is just a curiosity thing. This has nothing to do with how to... Could it fix. be when it's done on when it's been asleep or when it started up? And yeah, that they it? would come new. Yeah, I, I, I'm inclined to think that. So if they don't come now, then that's implying that they're probably not going to come until you restart the computer. So but, can we look at the startup and see what's starting up? See if there's yeah. something in there? Yeah. Well, okay, so that's another, uh, another thing there. In Task Manager, we're not going to see everything um persistence mode no windows security notifications see i'm thinking that it somehow has corrupted windows security notifications so the other piece of checking more thoroughly is with um auto runs from sys internals so we can just go download just the auto runs portion rather than downloading the entire suite. I've never actually downloaded a single module, but I believe I'm correct in saying that. So this is Sys Internals. It's hosted by Microsoft.com. Uh, it was created in 1996 by Mark Rusinovich, but I don't believe that this is actually a Microsoft software, even though Microsoft, you know, is hosting it. Um, troubleshooting with Windows Live. What I'm looking for here is a place for just downloading the auto runs. File and disk utilities, maybe uh, sys internals. I'm going to try a control F auto runs. And there's only one hit for it in here. Several tools newly ported, created for ARM64. We're not ARM64. Downloads. How about just going to this downloads page? Okay. And there's two hits. Click the down arrow on this. Here, auto run. See what programs are configured to start up automatically. Uh, there's nothing clickable here. Download auto runs, that would be the, um, oh yeah, okay, so this is just auto runs. All right, let's click on that. 
Open zip file. That was quick. That was. And here's auto runs. So can we actually run it directly from the zip file? I'm doing a double click. Answer the license agreement. Here we go. Boom. So we're on the tab now called everything. If we go to each of these other tabs, it shows us a subset of what we're currently looking at. So looking through this, everything right here, like here we get from the registry run key. Um, and then down here we get Windows current version run key. So basically this is telling us everything that's automatically running. It scrolls for a long distance because there's a whole lot of stuff <laughs> that automatically runs when you start a computer. Now there's this column out here called virus total. So this auto runs automatically will alert us to something that is found in the virus total database. Is this sortable? It doesn't, it's not clickable. So it doesn't look like we can sort based on that column. The different color codes have different meanings to them. Uh, the one the colors that we're seeing right now don't really jump out as trouble. So I'm going to click in the blank area below the scroll box, which scrolls me down one page at a time. And at this point, I'm just looking to see if there's any colors that jump out at me. There's so this is just file not found. That's not alarming. It's real loud with that yellow color. Yeah, it is. Just column wider. Now, actually, I'll point out something while doing this on the, making columns wider like that. Sometimes it's kind of a nuisance. If you double click on the right edge, it should go, it should expand to the maximum width of that column, but it didn't. That doesn't always work the way I expect. Description. Did we actually lose a column? No, I don't think so. Okay. So then there's also uh, filtering options here. Uh, let's see, what was it? There's a way to filter that better. Yeah, I'm not finding that right away. Okay, we'll just continue going down. There's that yellow section. Oh, there's a lot. Bigger, and this is kind of normal. It's not really alarming to find things um, that are not found. So things like um, C Cleaner, I would expect would 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 clean these uh, up, but I haven't verified that. So E Home, I believe, is a a feature that was available back in the past. Um, MC Update. Uh, that doesn't quite fit McAfee, but anyway, I think it's a um, a feature that isn't included in Windows anymore. But it it didn't doesn't get cleaned out properly. What I'd really like to see is something that shows up as a virus total issue. So here I'm going to go ahead and try again, making this wider. with the goal being if it does you're going to see where it's located at and what what the impact is yeah and and also this um auto runs gives some really nifty ways to deal with anything that you find um so like this one is just a font drivers apparently the file's no longer there but the registry is still trying to call it or has a configuration for it but it just sits there idle doing nothing that registry entry it's not really having any impact on the computer so nothing found there with an entry entry in virus total and 
scan options. Let's have a look at this. Scan only per user, verify code signature, check virus tool. So that didn't have a check mark in it. So let's rescan and see if it comes up. You must agree to virus total terms of service. So here's a bunch of hash submitted. And I think over time we're going to see some results. Here's 074. So for this item, if I've got this right, Microsoft Sync Center, it found zero hits out of 73 in their virus database. And we should see there's a whole bunch of things came up now. So it finished checking on a lot of things. Here it's still working on some more. Uh, scroll down, see if we still have Oops, some There's more. a one of 74. Yeah, yeah, there we did find some things. All right. Now, what I'd really like to do is sort that column so that the ones that have hits come to the total or figure some way to filter for that. And I know this is just me not knowing how to filter for that column. So... If I click, oh, I had a, had a hand there for a moment. Try clicking on it, right clicking on it, jump to and search online, find. What, can I search for one slash? No. Well, I'm certain somebody who is There's... more experienced with this is going to be yelling at the screen how to deal with it. Um, <laughs> so we'll just go ahead after it. So let's see, a single left click on that highlights it. A right click on this, jump to in entry, jump to image, resubmit, process explorer, search online, find and properties. So this is Microsoft Work Folders Shell Extension. And what more is it going to tell us about it? Let's try search online to see what that tells us. Google Chrome's flashing something down there. Yeah, that's because I did a search online. So okay. that's Google okay. Chrome responding. So it searched for work folders shell dot DLL. This is just going to be telling us about that DLL, not what virus total is saying about it. Uh, here's a virus total page. Oh, okay. Uh, this came Cronus. up. Cronus, Secure Age Apex. One security vendor flagged this file as malicious. So it's saying a Cronus, I think, flagged this Secure Age Apex as uh, a virus. Now, is it, did this, I, I'm guessing now that this page came up as a result of us doing that scan. And let's see what this one says. Terms of service. So these pages came up without us seeing them while we were in auto runs. Let's get a little higher level focus of what we got here. So here's another one that we've got. And then here's one down here. So I went down to another screen worth. Here's more similar sounding things. Go down another screen worth. And migration client. Migration client. So we got a few things going on here. Install service stacks. Bunch of file not founds. couple things here. So of course these would be easier to deal with just with letting a virus program do its thing. For us to try to fix this virus in here would not be a good idea because we're just tinkering around in the inner workings of the system here and uh, we don't know how to do this nearly as well as a 
professionally created antivirus software. But we can see there's a whole bunch of trouble. Yeah, yeah, clearly. So, but these are all files that have to do with the operating system um, and, and configuration. I mean, this, that's what Auto Runs is, is giving us access to. So I'm still leaning very favorably to System Restore. Yeah. If the computer's operating well enough to even perform a System Restore. Good point. And then if it's not, turn to an antivirus product. And my, my current favored method under these circumstances would be ESET Online Scanner. Um, the next more uh, major way of doing it is to remove the hard drive from this computer, connect it to another computer, and do a full scan from there. But going to that level, I, I think you might as well, because of the situation, just go ahead and do a wipe and reload. Right. Um, so I think we're done here in auto runs. We, we've seen uh, substantial evidence that the computer is actually infected, as opposed to my earlier comment that I think it's uh, all you had there was spam messages wanting you to click on something. Those could be two separate things. I mean, they, they could just both be a malware infection and actual virus infection. Right. So I'm inclined at this point to go ahead with System Restore. You have any other thoughts? On no, the that's that's. You know, that's, that's worth giving okay. a shot. Yeah. Now, System Restore typically takes a while to run. I've seen anywhere from like 20 minutes to a couple hours. Um, so we're not going to keep the video running during that time. And you've actually got a deadline to be somewhere else, I think. Right. I can extend that by about an hour. All right, so recommended restore. We're going to choose a different restore point because we want to go older. I'm going to show more restore points. And then there's that May 28th. Right, which and takes then, us way past the night, so we're good on yeah. that. And then finish. Once started, cannot be undone. Now, if system restore fails, it will revert the computer back to this state. Right. And while System Restore is trying to do its thing, it will uh, restart the computer. And when it restarts, we need to be very careful to capture whatever it says on the screen. So I'll ask you to take a picture. Okay. So, rather than trying to describe what it says. Right. And, yeah. And um, you've got. Did, did you get my phone number by virtue of me sending you that text message? Mm, I probably do. I, I'm not okay. sure. Okay, But at least you got you can do a reply text. But text, right. Since you received a text message from me that you should have been, you should be able to capture my phone number from that as well. So this will this will go for a varying amount of time. Once it gets to the point of restarting your computer, it's going to I think it's going to rudely shut off our Zoom session, <laughs> in which case I'll wrap up the video. And then since this is a recorded video, I'll probably just treat it like a pause in the video and then just edit on the follow up at the end of the video rather, being, rather than being a separate video to either describe the results or show the results if we're winding up. If, if, first okay, restart. We're about to kick. We're going to about. No, wait a minute. The Zoom session is on your phone. <laughs> right. The Zoom session is not through the computer. Now, will log me in one, two, three, reconnect? Um, not likely because of the restore to an earlier date. Um. There are some things it usually will reconnect and I'll leave it, let it try to reconnect. But since it's restoring to an earlier date, I don't think so. So I'm going to go ahead and punch up the Zoom session. Can you show us? Yeah. Uh, so this, I would expect it to take a while and it may give you some, um, I, I believe it, 
advances on to different messages as it's going through this. But I think I want to go ahead and end the Zoom session and have you reach out to me when you've got something to report. I can do that. And I'll take pictures along the way. Yeah. Okay. Work. Very good. good. All right. All right Talk to you later. Uh -huh. Thanks, Nell. Okay, so the video here is being uh, paused, essentially. It's going to look like a pause to you. So this is an unpause, and we're back. It's more than, took a little more than two hours for that to complete. You sent me some pictures. So you see, it appears that the system restore was successful, and it restored the malware bytes and the super anti-spyware and the infection. And um, I don't think we actually had discussed before, and I don't think I was aware that the computer was infected before you took those products off. I don't know for sure that it was, but I'm going to guess that it was because it's doing right back to the same thing it was doing. Yeah, so, but but malware bytes is present, right? right. Malware yes. bytes, super random, and C cleaners on here. And C cleaner. Okay, yeah. so that's telling us that the infection was present. Now, now the fact that you can't do a Windows Defender scan. Well, malware bytes is is able to coexist with Windows Defender, but I don't know about Super Anti Spyware. If it is, does it is it real time virus protection? No, I don't think it is. No. So it's run on run on demand. So yeah, I think it's already in, infected. Um, so, like we exchanged by text. We, the, the, there's no end to the things we could try doing, but I think based upon what you've already said about the computer, it just doesn't make sense for us to, to go further with it and, no. and just go ahead and reformat and reinstall. So could you just go ahead and turn around to the, turn the camera around sure. to the computer and just give us a quick, um, well, as you can see, there's, there's malware bytes, malware bytes, super anti spyware, yeah. And see cleaner. And then if we come down here, first thing I did when it got restarted was I checked to see which version we had. And clearly it's back to 2004. Oh, hey, you had uh, you had updated to a, a newer right. edition. To okay. To 21H1. Yes. Yeah. Well, you had done that since the date of the system restore that we did anyway. Right. You did, had you done that before you uninstalled those two programs? Doesn't I matter. don't remember, to be quite honest with you. Well, it doesn't matter to be quite honest with you, I guess. No, I don't I don't think I, I, uh, I really remember. So I just tried to run malware bytes, and it's not even running. It's uh, got some triangle down there, it says. Yeah. You does, know, go, does Google Chrome give you a bunch of pop-ups? I, no, I haven't had any pop-up. I can't even get Google Chrome to start. I've clicked on it a uh, hundred times, and it's not even starting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking this computer was pretty gone when you started working with it as, as far as infection or damage. So, yeah, I, I think it's just time to... Nuke it and clean nuke, it. Nuke, nuke and pave, wipe and reload. Yeah. I, I think you know that process, don't you? Oh, yeah. yeah I yeah. brought flash drives just in case. All right. So, Well, I think that's a wrap then. I think so. All <laughs> okay. right. Jeff, I'll let you know how, how, the, how it all ends. On the upside, on the upside, we did go through a whole lot of technical things to do. Yes. And, and, which means, you know, we, we got a lot of techniques on video, right. which I'm happy for that. <laughs> Yeah, should okay. anyone else ever run into this problem, you've got quite a bit of ammunition to try to fix it. Yeah, yeah, and those are all a a ammunition and techniques to use to try to resolve any any problem. It just didn't resolve yours. Yeah, right. for, I can't even run. I can't even run it. It's, I mean, it's just weird. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm building my computer next week, and right. then I'll just run over one of my two other computers and just give it to her, and then we'll just painstakingly move everything she needs off of her computer 
not by moving it, but by going to the specific websites and doing the information so that it's on that computer. Yeah. So, and then my sister's going to buy her Norton, which I gave up on that argument. So that's their business. All right. Yeah. So. It's, it's just, I, I'll, like I said, I'll give my recommendation, but if somebody's fixed on doing something, just. I just find it's very on. weird. Let me switch, switch this back. I find it's very odd that, um, you come down here and it says malware bytes free program version 3.5.1 updates up to date a scan has never been run but when you <laughs> click to open it it won't open yeah so yeah I, I think we're just to that point so i will let you know okay very good Pre appreciate all your help all right you're welcome talk to you later thank you bye you're welcome yeah. bye okay so that's that's the end of the ken stout series like i said we got through a lot of uh, t t technical techniques, troubleshooting methodology, and so on. And, but it didn't get us where we wanted to go. So I hope that was useful. I hope that was an interesting excursion for those of you who participated. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.